Movies tend to weave fairy tales out of being royal. We get fed images of waking up in silk bedsheets in palaces that are centuries old, with servants answering every beck and call, and a social calendar filled with royal playdates. It might all be grand, but there are a lot of demanding rules the royals have to follow. In today's video, we'll talk about the 30 most shocking rules royals are required to follow. Number 1. Curtsies and bows are required. Men must bow to the queen while addressing her, whereas ladies customarily curtsy. It's not necessary to make elaborate or prolonged gestures. A quiet bow or curtsy would do. The queen must give her consent for the family's oldest royals to wed. The Royal Marriages Act of 1772 stipulates that the king must officially approve any prospective bride or groom for senior royals. Following the announcement of an engagement, certain senior royals may decide to conduct a formal press conference. Number 2. Skip the PDA Rarely do the royals embrace or hold hands in public. Some people who follow the royal family may believe that couples are forbidden from engaging in PDA by manners or royal protocol. Instead, because they are employed as ambassadors for the British monarchy, some royals decide to conduct themselves professionally when they are out and about. According to Emily Nash, the royal editor at Hello! magazine, in the case of Prince William and Kate, the Duke and Duchess are almost always seen in photographs taken during official engagements, so they are at work, and it would be unprofessional to hold hands. They also need to shake hands with a huge number of people as they meet them, so aside from being on duty, it wouldn't be very practical. The royal family avoids making public demonstrations of affection, especially when abroad. Royals are expected to avoid displaying their affection in front of people from more conservative or distant cultures. An illustration would be William and Catherine's stern expressions while touring the Taj Mahal in 2016. Number 3. Bridal parties are comprised of children. Little children used to carry the bride's train, but the ladies-in-waiting and staff took care of the heavy lifting when it came to getting the bride ready. The two young sons of Meghan Markle's best friend, Jessica Mulroney, drove the train. The maids of honor, matrons of honor, and best men are traditional for royal brides and grooms. However, some brides and grooms choose to avoid bestowing this honor upon a close friend or relative. Number 4. No Nicknames Allowed Instead of using nicknames given to them by their families, royalty is supposed to be addressed by their full given names. Kate started using the title Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge after she wed William. Harry's given name is Henry, or even more formally, HRH Prince Henry Charles Albert David of Windsor. But some royals have ignored these laws since they were little. Number 5. Children must play outside daily. Children in the royal family adhere to a highly rigid schedule that includes at least one session of outdoor playtime each day, said Louise Heron, author of Nanny in a Book, which explores the training potential royal nannies get at Norland College in Bath. There will be lots and lots of outdoor play, lots of bike rides, playing with their dogs, potentially some gardening. Yes, you are getting mucky with your hands in the soil, but you're learning how to plant, Miss Heron told the son, adding, if it is tipping down, they will still go out. Number 6. The Royal Diet Since shellfish are thought to be more prone to cause food poisoning and allergic responses, it is not permitted to be served at royal banquets. Garlic is not a food that the queen likes, hence the seasoning is never used in the dishes for dinners that she hosts or attends. Number 7. There is a specific way to drink tea. Even though it's called high tea, afternoon tea is a more relaxed service and royals are frequently expected to participate. Tea cups are held in a precise way, with the middle finger supporting the bottom of the handle and the thumb and index finger pinching the top of the handle. To prevent lipstick stains on the rim of the cup, royal women are instructed to strive to always sip from the same area while holding the cup handle at 3 o'clock. Number 8. Don't mess with the dog. No matter how they behave, the dogs of the Queen are not subject to reprimands from the personnel at Buckingham and Kensington Palaces because the Queen prefers that they be permitted to wander freely. 
Gourmet meals are served to the royal dogs daily, which is prepared by one of the palace's chefs and brought to them by a footman. The queen herself walks the dogs. Number 9. Dinner parties are heavily orchestrated and involve tons of protocol. The queen subtly schedules her conversations with the guests at her side. She spends her time speaking to the person on her right for the first course and then converses with the person on her left for the second course. Seating at a royal dinner party is meticulously planned. Additionally, it is customary for royals to cross their utensils at the table if they must leave before finishing their meal to prevent the waitstaff from taking their plates. When done, the utensils are stacked side by side and angled so that their handles are pointing toward the bottom right corner of the plate. Number 10. Some words are off limits. There are some words that only royals will use, and they all have more appropriate alternatives. A toilet is always referred to as a lavatory, and you should never interrupt a conversation without first saying sorry or pardon, respectively. Instead of living rooms, lounges, or dens, couches are referred to as sofas and are placed in drawing rooms or sitting rooms. In addition to mum and dad, Brits may also refer to their parents as mummy and daddy when they're feeling particularly loving. To make the smell sound more natural to the person, perfume is also sometimes referred to as scent when describing someone. Number 11. The royal kids can't call the queen grandma. But that doesn't mean that she insists on being addressed as your royal highness by her great-grandchildren or grandkids. The queen is known to them only as granny or gangan. We can only hope that Prince William continues to address the Queen as Gary, as reported by the Daily Mail. Number 12. Sit like a royal. According to etiquette guidelines, sitting with one's legs crossed at the knee is among the worst things a woman in the royal family can do. Keep your legs and knees together. However, an ankle cross is acceptable. The Duchess slant is a common position that was dubbed after the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, by Beaumont etiquette. Her preferred sitting position entails slanting her legs to the side and keeping her knees and ankles close together. It holds her upright and gives the impression that her legs are longer. Princess Diana, who has passed away, was known to sit in the same manner. Number 13. Descend stairs gracefully. The royals walk with their toes pointed in the direction of the railing and rest one hand on any banisters rather than grabbing them. Additional guidelines, if you're a man, assist your wife. Keep your chin parallel to the floor if you're a woman. Chins pointing upward or downward convey a lack of attention to the conversation taking place in the room below you. The glorious glide is the term used to describe this royal method of descending stairs. Number 14. Two direct heirs are not allowed to travel together. Two direct successors to the throne, such as Prince William and Prince George, are not permitted to fly together by law to protect the line of succession. This regulation was established in the past, when flying was less secure, to make sure that the lineage would be safeguarded in the event of an accident. For many reasons, Prince William and Kate Middleton have chosen to defy royal convention by taking their children on a few occasions. Prince George and Prince William, however, are reportedly expected to go separately to royal events after they become 12 years old. Number 15. The royals arrive in a specific order. When your grandma hosts a family, they likely arrive at her home randomly. Simply said, it depends on what time they departed from their home. However, guests are admitted into the British royal family according to their status. Depending on their place in the family, each person is assigned a set arrival time. In contrast to more senior members, such as Prince Charles, William, and Harry, the younger members arrive first. The same is true of walking. Each member of the family must proceed in line with their rank when walking together. This means that during formal events, you won't often see the grandchildren walking alongside their grandma. Number 16. Royal children eat separately from their parents. Christmas Eve is just as significant as Christmas Day because of the German heritage of the royal family. Some would even contend that it's even more unique. Because of this, the Windsors host a black tie Christmas Eve supper when everyone dresses to the nines. The children are not seated in the main hall with the adults for the black tie Christmas Eve supper in Sandringham. 
The children instead eat at a children's table in the nursery, which is on a different floor. As a result, moving from the nursery table to the Great Hall has come to be seen as somewhat of a rite of passage for young children. Number 17. The Queen Doesn't Have to Use a Passport to Travel The Queen's name appears on every passport issued in the United Kingdom. The Queen can therefore travel without a passport of her own. The Prince of Wales and every other member of the royal family, however, have their own passports. Number 18. They need to hold utensils in the correct hands. Even while you might not give your food preparation much attention, the royal family takes dining etiquette very seriously. Forks with the tines facing down are held in the left hand and knives in the right. They balance their food on the back of their forks before bringing it to their mouths rather than stabbing it. Although it seems proper, eating seems to be transformed into an acrobatic accomplishment. Number 19. Queen Elizabeth and the royal family can't vote in the British elections. The reigning queen, Queen Elizabeth II, is not prohibited from casting a ballot under any provisions of written British law, but it's just not done, as the British might say. The UK Parliament website states that while it is not illegal, it is unconstitutional for the monarch to participate in elections. The leader of the party with the most seats will be invited by the Queen to form a government the day following the election. Therefore, the Queen does have a formal involvement in the nation's political system. Then, assuming they can secure a majority, made up of members of their own party or coalition, they are appointed Prime Minister. Number 20. No autographs, please. The royals are not permitted to receive presents, take selfies, or even sign autographs, as those who are fortunate enough to meet them will learn. It is actually against the law for any family member to sign autographs. The royal family is prohibited from signing autographs due to the possibility of signature forgery. The royals aren't meant to snap selfies either, though they are occasionally caught doing so. There is no doubt that Meghan Markle violated the autograph policy. According to reports, Prince Charles replies to requests for autographs with, Sorry, they don't allow me to do that. However, he did defy convention in 2010 when he signed an autograph for a victim of terrible flooding. On a scrap of paper, he wrote, Charles 2010, but he hasn't taken any action in the years afterward. Number 21. They cannot go to bed before the Queen. Going to bed before HRH is considered impolite, according to Sir William Heseltine, a former private secretary for the Queen. Mr. Heseltine describes how the late Princess Diana struggled with this regulation in his book The Royals in Australia. For Diana, the long royal evenings were agony, he writes. There'd be an hour or so in the sitting room of everyone sitting around making conversation. And Diana was driven to such extremes that she'd excuse herself and go to bed, which was thought to be rather a bad form, going to bed before the Queen. Number 22. There are strict policies around accepting gifts. During their public appearances and international tours, the royals receive hundreds of gifts from well-wishers, but there are restrictions on what they can and cannot take. No gifts, including hospitality or services, should be accepted, which would or would appear to place the member of the royal family under any duty to the donor, according to the 2003 gifts policy. In the UK, gifts from companies are typically denied unless they are offered as a souvenir of an official visit to the enterprise's premises, to mark a royal marriage, or another special personal occasion. The royals can accept gifts from public bodies, such as the armed services or charities, especially those with which they have an established connection. The royals can accept modest gifts from the general people, such as flowers, food, reasonable quantities of consumables, and uncontroversial literature, but they are not allowed to accept anything that costs more than 150 pounds. Every year, lists of formal gifts made to royal family members are published by Buckingham Palace. Number 23. The Queen can't be arrested or be the subject of civil and criminal proceedings, meaning she is effectively exempt from the law. Due to her sovereign immunity, the Queen is not subject to civil or criminal proceedings. In essence, there wouldn't be anything that could be done to stop the Queen from committing crimes. However, the official website of the royal family claims, 
Although civil and criminal proceedings cannot be taken against the sovereign as a person under UK law, the Queen is careful to ensure that all her activities in her capacity are carried out in strict accordance with the law. Number 24. The royal family does not have to obey legal speed limits, but only when they're driven by police on official royal duties. The royal family does not have to obey legal speed limits, but only when they're driven by police on official royal duties. When the Queen, the Prime Minister, and other royal family members are being driven by police officers on official royal business, they are free to drive at any speed they like. The Road Traffic Regulation Act, according to The Sun, permits vehicles operated by law enforcement agencies including police, fire, and ambulances to exceed posted speed restrictions. The Royals vehicles are exempt from following speed limits since they are always escorted by police when doing royal responsibilities. Number 25. Though it's not illegal to celebrate your birthday more than once a year, it's not typical unless you're Queen Elizabeth. The Queen celebrates two birthdays each year, her actual birthday on April 21st and her formal public-facing birthday party on the second Saturday in June, according to the royal family's official website. This has a very straightforward explanation. To maximize the likelihood of good weather for the yearly Trooping the Color procession, sovereign rulers have frequently celebrated their public birthdays on days other than their actual birthdays, especially when their genuine birth dates fell in the autumn or winter. Number 26. The monarchy is also exempt from the Freedom of Information Act. The royal household is not a public authority within the meaning of the FOI Acts and is therefore exempt from their provisions, according to the royal family's website. This rule gives the royal family more discretion over their daily business and financial affairs. For instance, specific information about how the royal household uses public money and how much the royal family has tried to influence government policy is not accessible to the public in the United Kingdom. Number 27. Her Majesty is also not required to have a driver's license. Imagine seeing the Queen racing a car down the road. Sounds funny, but just imagine. Then first off, she wouldn't be pulled over for that, for chances are unlikely for this to happen. However, if it does happen, the Queen wouldn't have a driver's license to provide even if she were stopped for speeding. Yes, that's true. Queen Elizabeth II completed her driving and mechanic training at the age of 18 for the Women's Auxiliary Territorial Service during World War II. The Queen is still permitted to drive without a number plate and has never had to take a real driving test. Number 28. Never ever play Monopoly. Yes, just like the well-known board game. When Prince Andrew, the third child of the Duke of York and Queen Elizabeth, received the game from the Leeds Building Society in 2008, he said, We're not allowed to play Monopoly at home. It gets too vicious. This leaves us and the entire world with so many questions about how competitive the royal family is. Number 29. Leave the table without a fuss. Royals don't make announcements when they need to visit the restroom during a meal. They merely utter, excuse me, and move on. To let the waitstaff know not to take the plate if they are still eating, people may cross their utensils. After the meal is over, they arrange the utensils at an angle, placing the handles at the bottom right corner of the dish, like 4.20 on a clock. Number 30. Everyone gets weighed before and after Christmas dinner. Even though the royal family has many festive customs, some of them are less endearing than others. Each member of the royal family must undergo a bizarre ritual in which they must be weighed both before and after Christmas dinner. If they gain weight, it is assumed that they thoroughly enjoyed the meal. What are your opinions on this video? Do you think any of the rules mentioned in the video must be changed? Is there any other rule among the royals which is weird and you ain't fond of? Do let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. We continue to produce informative and entertaining videos, so please subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click the bell icon down below. This way, you'll never miss out on anything new we come up with. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.